The new Grand Warden Epic Equipment, the Fireball, is insane. And today I'm going to show you the best army to use at every town hall so you can maximize the Fireball. Let's start at Town Hall 11, and we're going to come in with a Pekka Smash, starting off with a Warden Walk. Now, why the Warden Walk? Because it best maximizes the Fireball Hero equipment. How does it do that? Well, you can Warden Walk slightly far into the base, so you can maximize that Fireball, but then you can pull your Warden out and direct him into whatever's left of the base with the rest of your Smash troops. Now, I have put down two Earthquake there. Don't worry. I'll talk about that in one minute. Quickly, I'll talk about the Flame Fling here. Uh, flame Flinger alongside your Warden Walk. However, if you don't have the ability to get donated a Flame Flinger and you don't have the Raid Medals, you don't really need a Siege Machine. It is Town Hall 11. You can make do without it. Just figured I'd put the Flame Flinger in for this video. So we're coming in with the Warden Walk here and I'm going to pause it. So right here, the goal of my Warden Walk is is to get rid of the Defending Clan Castle. Not only does it set an elite funnel, but it means I don't have to bring a poison spell, as you can see, and that is really handy to not deal with the defensive CC troops. But you need to think about when you do this, what building you want your Warden ability to target. What do I mean by that? Well, keep in mind the Fireball will target the closest defense. So for me on this hit, I wanted my Fireball to target this Expo. One, because it's close enough to the CC it, that it will be in range of the fireball. But two, it's not so close to the CC that we're going to pull it. Because if I click on the CC here, you're going to see my warden's going to get pretty close in range to it. So yes, you obviously want to pick defenses that are close to it, but not too close. Otherwise, you're going to pull the CC anyway, and it's all pointless. Now, the range is six tiles. Uh, this is easily six tiles, or I should say the radius is six tiles. This is easily within that range there, so no problem. So the Warden's going here, and have a look. So my Warden is targeting the gold storage here, but keep in mind the Fireball targets the closest defense. So I put that on, and bam, we've cleared out the core. So we're going to start with the Pekka Smash on the right side. King and the Witch is on the top. Now it's worth noting one thing. So in all of the attacks today, I will be using the maxed Fireball for that town hall level. I know a lot of you, when you get this equipment, won't be able to max it immediately. So in terms of how many Quake spells you have to use, that might not be the same as in the video today. But in terms of at Town Hall 11, if you have a max Fireball, you need two Earthquakes to finish off the Eagle Artillery. You need one Earthquake to finish off the CC, and you need zero Earthquakes to finish off Expos or Multi Inferno. So I brought two Quakes in this attack, and that was a mistake. I only needed the one. Now, one question you might all ask is, why aren't I bringing Bowlers in this attack? I definitely could have brought Bowlers in it, but Bowlers are the sort of troop that need the Warden ability, because if they get in trouble, you pop the Warden and they stay alive and hopefully get the Healer Switch. Whereas when you don't have the Eternal Tome, those bowlers are infinitely more vulnerable. Same as the life gem. We don't have either of them. So the bowlers are quite vulnerable. So I decided to bring four peckers. And whilst time is an issue here, because the peckers are not quick at getting throughout the base, the water walk is still generally quite quick with the rage gem and with the fireball DPS. And the peckers refuse to die. They do not need the eternal tome. They have enough hit points. And that is going to be a common theme throughout the day. I just realized I said throughout the day, like this video is going to take the entire day. No, throughout the video, I should say, high HP smash armies to finish off the base will definitely be a theme because they don't need the Eternal Tome as much. So we're coming in with the Warden Walk here with the Flame Flinger. Yet again, if you don't have the ability to receive a Flame Flinger because you can't train it at Town Hall 12, to my knowledge, uh, you can bring a Siege Varrocks is a good one, but I really like the Flame Flinger. It helps speed up your Warden Walk a bit. And you've got the Warden tanking the air bows and the mortars in the area or ground bows. Uh, so the Flame Flinger is definitely a lot more safe. And believe it or not, I'm going to try and use my Warden ability on the Bomb Tower here. We use the Baby Dragon on the top side to clear a few buildings. And somehow within 30 seconds, my Warden's in a position to crush the core of this base. Because look, he could get the CC Eagle, Bomb Tower obviously, but also the Defensive Queen. So I put two Quake spells down. And oh my word, I mean, that's just ridiculous, right? I've completely messed up my hair. Not that I'm much of a hairstylist anyway, but I've completely destroyed the core of this base. Just not fair play at all. Now we're coming in with the Yetis on the back end. 
Uh, Pekka's and Yetis are probably just as strong in this army at Town Hall 12. I just decided to bring something different from the first attack. So we got the Yetis coming across here. And what I love about the Warden Walk is the only spell I used on the Warden Walk was the Earthquake spell. Now, at Town Hall 12, to get the Eagle Artillery down without the Warden Target in it himself is two Earthquakes. To get the CC down, it's one Earthquake. Then to get any other defense down, it you don't need an Earthquake at all. Which is why I can see this being so ridiculously strong at Town Hall 11 as we saw in Town Hall 12. Because you don't need an Earthquake if you're just going for, say, the uh, Defensive Expos and Infernos. However, I still think the CC is the best target to get with this. Now, unfortunately, the smash doesn't go that great. A lot of the Yetis go to the outside of the base, but it doesn't really matter. The Flame Fling, I cleared out a ridiculous amount of base. We have the Hogs come out of it. I like Hogs at Town Hall 12 to come out of the CC. Gonna come and clear up the rest of the base. Kind of do what the Royal Champion does at the higher Town Hall levels. I've still got a Swag Rage. I've got a Queen ability as well. I mean, this base is completely wrecked. Now, don't get me wrong. The base layouts you see in this video aren't necessarily going to be the strongest ones ever. It's just the best ones I could put together quickly for this video. But there are plenty of layouts with the CC and the Eagle set up exactly like this. So I can see this being used game wide. Coming in at Town Hall 13 and once again we are using the Yetis. I really like the Yetis for this style of attack. A perfect balance of hit points and damage. And the ability for Yeti Mites to target defenses over the walls is a benefit that Pekkas simply don't possess. Now coming in with the Earthquake spell here and look at this. We've been able to activate the Town Hall whilst also hitting the CC, which means the Flame Flinger on the top side will be able to target the Town Hall and take it down. And yet again, I'm going to take down the CC, which looks ridiculous because look how far embedded in the base it is. And that's why I think this is going to be so hard to defend because where is safe for your CC? So the building I'm targeting is this Expo here. The Warden shoots the Expo. I set off the Fireball ability. It goes down. And the entire core of the base is gone. The fling is targeting in the town hall. And this hit could not be going any better. I mean, what are you meant to do to defend this? That's my biggest problem with this uh, or this strategy at the moment. There doesn't seem to be a counter unless you can get a Tesla to pop at the right time. And pull your fireball ability from where you want it to go. Now, worth noting, at Town Hall 13, this is the first Town Hall where you need two Quake spells to finish off the CC. So, it's two Earthquake spells for the Eagle, two for the CC. For the Expos and the Scatter, you need one. And for the Inferno, you don't need a Earthquake spell at all. So, I hope that helps you guys out. But yeah, look at the Yetis coming across here. Now, one thing that I'm going to talk about briefly... I don't see Super Bowlers being used with this strategy a lot because I don't think they're tanky enough. The Super Bowlers kind of rely on the Eternal Tome uh, because they're going to do a lot of damage in that time and it also allows them to regain their hit points that they can lose very quickly. That's why I'm using armies like Pekkas, uh, Yetis. You're going to see me use Titans and Root Riders in the future because they don't rely on the Warden of uh, the Eternal Tome as much. They're just tanks for your heroes, and I tell you what, heroes are so strong at the moment that they're going to finish off the base easily. I swagged so much there. As I alluded to in the last attack, we're going to see E-Titans used here. E-Titans are great for this army. Uh, one, because you're going to have plenty of rage spells to speed up the Titans, but two, the Titans don't rely on the Eternal Tome. They've got plenty of hit points as is. So we're going to Warden Walk here. And I want my Warden to target the Eagle here. Because if we target the Eagle, we will be able to just clip the uh, CC here. This is the maximum range of it. And it's still enormous. I mean, it's crazy to think about how this all works out. So the Warden of Warden Walk coming in here. Now, I've got to get through a lot of buildings. But the Warden is so quick. Especially when you uh, pair him with the Flame Flinger. Yet again using the Flame Flinger in this uh, army. When you pair him with the Flame Flinger and a Baby Drag or two, you can make these Warden Walks that look like they should take forever happen quite quickly. So the Warden's spreading off a little to the side here, but as soon as he comes in, 
We're going to get him to target the eagle. Then I put the quakes down. I have to wait to the last second because obviously you get builder huts uh, that, that repair as in the defense at town or 14. So make sure you're not putting it down too early. Otherwise, it will heal, heal up. Now, town or 14 is basically the same as town or 13. You need two earthquakes to finish off the eagle, two to finish off the CC, and then one for uh, scatters, expos, and infernos. So you're going to need an earthquake spell no matter what. So technically... By by the amount of spells you need to finish off buildings, Town Hall 14 is the most difficult. But you also get the E-Titans, and they are a great troop to finish off the base. We've got the the Yetis on the top side that came out, came out of the Flame Fling, because the Flame Fling, it didn't get a lot of value beyond the Warden Walk, but that's okay. I All I need is my Warden Walk to get the value. I'll assist that in any way possible, and the rest of the base will go down. And I'm currently sitting on a King ability, a Queen ability, two Rage spells. I definitely didn't need my Royal Champion, but I put her down anyway. And we've got a bunch of cleanup spells as well. I mean, how are you meant to stop this? How are you meant to stop this? I've done it on a whole bunch of different style of bases today. There's always going to be a way to get to the CC. Maybe in the future, we'll see people baiting the defensive CC, I don't know. It's a really weird thing to think about because I don't know how you're meant to stop this. Maybe in the future they'll do kind of what they did with the uh, uh, lightning spells uh, that you, they can't, cannot take down the defensive CC. I don't know, but for now, I'm going to take advantage. Coming in at Town Hall 15 here, once one of the toughest Town Halls in Clash of Clans history, or at least since Town Hall 10 dropped so many years ago, now easier than ever and partly in thanks to the Fireball. To be fair, mainly thanks to the insanely massive nerfs that it got at the end of Town Hall 15, but the Fireball can be a contributing factor as well. And I'm coming in with the Root Riders here. Yes, they did get a nerf, but they pair perfectly with this because I don't need to bring any jump spells, which means I have so many other spells that I can bring. So the Warden Walk's coming in on the bottom here. Yet again, I'm going to try and pop my Warden ability on the Eagle because if I get this right, I will clear out a massive amount of base. So the Warden should target the Eagle next. I put the one Quake down. I mean... That's ridiculous. The only reason that Inferno didn't go down is because I slightly missed my Quake spell. Although, I don't know if I could have got both Infernos. But still, that is a ridiculous amount of base to get down with one spell. Now, at Town Hall 15, you do need two Earthquake to finish off the Eagle. But I knew my Warden was going to target the Eagle anyway. So, I wasn't worried about bringing the second Earthquake for him. And now, the Root Riders are going to open up the base. I'm bringing in a lot of Super Barbs with this army. That's why I've only got five Root Riders. Because if, as long as the Root Riders and my heroes go in the base, it's almost impossible to fail. So, we got more Super Barbs on the top side here. The Root Riders still super tanky. Not as tanky as before, but still tanky enough. And I just need to wait long enough for my heroes to take out the core. The Root Riders deal with the Monolith in the center, and now there is nothing left to deal with. I've got the Flame Flinger on the bottom side. I forgot to deploy it during my Warden Walk. Oops. <laughs> I mean, what what can you do? I could have used any Siege Machine here. Probably didn't need the Siege Machine at all, to be honest. King Ability has been used. Have not used the Queen Ability, and had not deployed the RC, and I have a Heal Spell, two Rages, and an Invis left. Yes, I have seven swag uh, spell space here. You don't see that too often, and a swagged royal champion. I can't remember if I do try and swag it or not. I guess we'll see in a second. My queen's trying her best not to shoot the defensive queen, which is a little bit annoying, but she will come back here. And this is... Look, don't get me wrong. I'm probably pretty good at the game, but I'm not this good at the game. And the thing that you guys might not believe, but I'm, I'm telling you this, it's true... Only one of the hits I failed today. Every other hit you're seeing here is a fresh hit. And it goes down this easily. What are we meant to do? For Town Hall 16, I decided to do something a little different. I'm going to do the attack live for you all so you can see me in action. Now, we've got the CC on the top side here. But I don't think that Expo is in range of the CC. Nor the multi Archer Tower. We could go for the Sweeper with the Warden Walk. But I don't know. Nah, stuff it. We're going to go for something not the CC. Just to show you guys how broken this is. You don't even have to take the CC down. So if I land on the bomb tower here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a look at this. So, one, two, three, four, five. If I land on the bomb tower here, I should be able to get a scatter. Poison tower. 
Ricochet Cannon, uh, Expo Queen as well. I mean, that is a ridiculous amount of value and will set a good funnel. Worth noting at Town Hall 16 when it comes to the Quake spells, the Eagle needs two Quake, everything else needs one. However, the Ricochet Cannon will barely go down, so you do not want the Builder Heart to be able to heal it. And that is ridiculous. That is so blatantly ridiculous. Oh, this is unhealthy for the game. That is a lot of value. That is a lot of value. So I'm setting the funnel. Hopefully my peckers go outside the base. I don't think I got what I wanted. No, everything's going in. Well, these wizards better set a an amazing funnel here. Otherwise, all my troops will go out. Ooh, one pecker went out. Beautifully done there. And we're looking okay. I've still only used the two Earthquake spells. I mean, isn't that stupid to think about? So this Poison Tower goes off. We've got the Raged Healers. So none of our troops are dying. We have the Defensive CC come out. But this is why I bring the Titan in this army. So you can see I've got the Titan there. Just in case uh, I don't go for the CC. Besides, a Titan's never done bad for an attack anyway. I'm not going to complain about having it. No Tornado's been a bit annoying. But this is why you love having higher hit point troops. Because these Root Riders are getting a little bit wrecked here. But that's okay. Because they've got so many hit points that it's not really going to matter. King Ability going off. He's going to be able to tank that Monolith beautifully. Hopefully the Monolith gets distracted by the Skellies. And that right there should be a Clan Clash triple. I'll put the Wizards down. Yeah, stuff it. We'll put a Baby Drag down over here. Yeah, this base is completely and utterly wrecked. Now, it's worth noting, as I said earlier in the video, every every bit of he hero equipment I used today was maxed for that specific town hall. And you might not have that. But have a look at how many sp spells I've swagged continuously throughout this video. Even if you don't have the max warden equipment for your town hall immediately, you can test it out yourself. It's still pretty good if it's a few levels below. And you might have to bring one extra earthquake or two, even. That's fine. I'm swagging what? Six spell space here. I swagged seven in the last one. You don't even need this hero equipment max to get the results for it. You just need to know what you're doing with it. Make sure you FC so you know the right amount of quake spells you got to bring. And then you're going to have an insane amount of success with this because this strategy is broken. <laughs>